All right, as we told you, breaking news in the past few hours, Bruce Arians has <clears throat> retired from coaching and will move into a front office role with the Buccaneers. Rick Stroud of the Tampa Times reports that Tom Brady was notified this the day of or the day after he made his retirement announcement. Hmm. Okay. His retur- I, I, what I mean is his return from retirement announcement. Thank you very much. His, the day that he announced he was coming back to play football was either on that day or the day after that reportedly he heard that Arians was going to step down. Then Brady posted a goodbye letter to Arians on Instagram tonight that read in part, you are an incredible man and coach, and it was a privilege to pay, uh, play for you. You are a true NFL legend and pioneer. You were a huge part of the decision to join the Bucks, and I'm forever grateful. All right, let's get into this and think what really happened. Burt Breer of SI just back from the NFL owners meetings in Florida. Burt, Good stuff. Brady forced this guy out. It can't be anything else, can it? I think both things can be true. There was definitely a level of frustration that Brady had with the way the Buccaneers program was. He was responsible for running a lot of things um, and sort of setting a standard over the last couple of years. So, There's no question that there was some tension and some frustration there from Brady's side. But I also think that Arians is being forthright when he said that he wanted to give this opportunity to to Todd Bowles from the moment he got there in 2019, well before Brady was there. There was the idea that a succession plan had been in place the whole time. There were rumors before the Super Bowl last year that Arians was thinking about handing it off to Todd Bowles then. And I mean, look, I think part of the timing here may be just to ensure that Todd Bowles got the job too. You know, if they open this thing up in in January, maybe it looks a little bit different, but I think Bruce Arians absolutely positively wanted Todd Bowles to have this job. He thought Todd Bowles who played for him as a college player at Temple deserved a second shot, kind of got screwed with the Jets. And this was the best way to set Todd Bowles up for success. So you don't think this is a case of Tom Brady saying, look, if you want me to play, uh, Bruce Arians has to go. I- I'm just asking you. Uh, you know, oh, you that's what I think. Happened. You hear these rumors I, out there all the time, and I know Felger thinks that, and others do. Uh, do you believe there's any validity to that? No, I mean, I think that there's definitely. I mean, there's an awareness, you know, from the Buccaneers front office and the Buccaneers ownership that there was that frustration there. So I'm not denying it could have been a factor. I don't know that Tom would have done that though. Like, have we ever seen him push a teammate out? Push a you know, a, a coach out push, uh, somebody in the front office out. We've never saw that from him before. You know, he's never been the kind of guy who actually made decisions for for, for, for anyone in personnel. Now, he'll let his feelings be known, and we've seen him freeze people out before, um, but we've never really seen him actively push anybody out. So, you know, I think people in the Buccaneers organization knew the score there, but well, do I, I mean, think I, that, that I, I, I when Brady went so, over there to Manchester to talk to the Glazers yeah. that all of a sudden he said, it's me or him, and I'll come back if he's gone. I'm not sure that it's in Brady's nature to deliver that kind of ultimatum. Oh, I don't know. I mean, that's that's still not in his hands where Brady can, you know, simply say, uh, look, I'm not going to play for him. Hmm. And now it's up to the Glazers. That's right. Brady's not pushing anybody out. He's just saying, that's just someone that I can't play for at this point. And so it's, I a, way, it's a way of pushing him out. Never, that right. It's about. passive aggressive like, like they all are. There was, there, it was never that personal between him and Arians, though. Like, there, again, there was tension there, and there were things that frustrated Brady. I know that for a fact. Like, you know, I again, like if you go, if you went to their practices the last couple of summers and you talked to people about it, you could see it. I mean, on offense, Brady was running it. On defense, Jason Pierre Paul was running it. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, the standard was set by the players. In spring, their OTAs were basically run by the veteran players. Only the young players worked with the coaches. You know, and so I, I do think there was a level from, of frustration from Brady, you know, on that stuff because he was so used to things being done a certain way for so long, you know, and I think to some degree he missed the discipline and the structure that the Patriots coaches put in place for him and the rest of the people in New England. I, I just, it, Felger, it's really hard for me to see Tom Brady, like it being in his nature to press the nuclear button like that. Well, I think he let his feelings be known and then some of these things happen naturally. Well, let me go back to your competition. Your primary com- uh, competition as an NFL insider, Dale Arnold, uh, put it out there that, that the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. Uh, yeah. What do you mean? You laughing at Dale, your number one competition? Uh, he put it no, out there. I love Dale. He put it out there that Brady uh, could wind up in Miami. Do you think there's any truth to that? And now that the coach is out of the way, does Tom Brady say, all right, now I'm leaving too? 
No, no. I, I mean, I, I think that that was something that was on the table maybe in December or January. I don't think it is now. And there are, there are a couple of reasons why. Number one, like, I don't like think the retirement was ever a real retirement. Like, I think what Brady did was make it look like it was really sloppy, the retirement itself, make it look like he was forced out to take the heat off, to give him some time to consider his options that five or six weeks. And I do think that he wanted to look at the idea of going to a San Francisco, of going to a Miami. And I don't think it was any mistake that the Buccaneers messaging at the combine was what it was. I mean, if you look at what Bruce Arians and Jason Light said, like they were very forceful in saying he's playing here and he's or he's playing nowhere else. Okay, Bert, And let- I think Brady coming back when he came back was the realization that if I'm going to play in 2022, it's going to have to be for the Buccaneers. Right. And the reason he made the decision, of course, when he did was because it was the beginning of free agency and they had a boatload of free agents. So I just, I think it's done because I think Brady, when he made the decision came to come back, he had resigned himself to playing in Tampa and he used the comeback to recruit guys like Ryan Jensen, like Leonard Fournette, like Carlton Davis back. And so I think once he used, you know, his own presence to get some of those veteran players back and tell those guys, come back and we'll compete for a championship, I think the idea of him playing anywhere else became a lot more. Right. He was also told that Bruce Arians was stepping down.